Welcome to This Is My Architecture. Today, I have here with me Ido from Mobileye. Hi, Ido. Hi, Buzz. Ido, tell us a bit about Mobileye. Mobileye is a world leader company in camera-based driver assistance systems with over 70 million Mobileye inside vehicles around the world. It is also a world leader company in autonomous driver system. In addition, Mobileye is providing a full suite of data services using an award-winning award road mapping technology on vehicles. And this is the theme you are coming from? Tell us how you do that. To do that, we collect anonymized data using sensors and visual inspections from cars. This data is being sent to a REST API in a different AWS account and then stored into S3 for future usage. Okay, so cars are driving around the world collecting data, storing into an S3 bucket, then what? For that purpose exactly, our team developed Dynamic RAM. Dynamic RAM is a platform which, uh, which, allows, uh, which allows us to provide customers with uh, mobility intelligence and live events data. Okay. It is composed of three main layers. The process layer, which is responsible for processing the data received from the cars and then store it into the store layer. The store layer contains multiple technologies in order to support system different needs. Uh, it is composed of S3, Elasticsearch, and CockroachDB. Then, platform insights are exposed to customers using the consume layer. Okay, who is the typical customer of the system? So Dynamic RAM has multiple customer types. For example, road and cities, planners, and operators. Cool. So let's dive deep into the architecture. So you collected the data, move it to Dynamic RAM. What do you do with this data? So as I mentioned before, data is stored in S3. From there, it is being pulled to SQS and then being processed by our EKS workers. Those EKS workers actually scales automatically according to the relevant SQS queue size and can scale up to 800% during a day. At the next phase, um, we pre-process, format, store the data in S3, and then send it to a set of algorithms implemented by step functions executing multiple lambda functions. Can you give me an example for uh, one of those functions? Yes, of course, Bud. So one example for an algorithm can be the extraction of potential construction zones from vehicles. Okay, then what? Then the, the results are being exposed to the rest of the system's components. For okay. example, a sophisticated clustering mechanism which combines observations from different vehicles into clustered events. Another example can be the, our aggregation mechanism, which aggregates data by, um, by time and uh, road segments. Cool, so you already collected some data, got some insights. What are you doing with these insights? So, for example, if I'm a city planner, the platform can provide me accurate hourly data regarding pedestrian and bicycle traffic, which allows me to plan better roads and cities. Okay, and how can I get this data from the system? So after, uh, the, after the data uh, was calculated, we save it into Elasticsearch and CockroachDB. At the next phase, we serve this data to our customers using an EKS cluster. This EKS cluster is serving a secured REST API and web application, which our users are using to consume the data. Okay, so I can actually got the insights from this. I wonder how many events the system can process? So today we use between 100 to 800 uh, EKS workers in order to process around 10 million observations per day. Okay, 10 million observations per day doesn't sound much. Like you have 70 million cars driving all over the world. The amount of data each car can produce. Why is that? That's an excellent question, Boaz. We actively limit the amount of data flowing into the system in order to, in order to control costs and allow a per-per-use model. Okay, so I get it. This is obviously intentional. Okay, so let's talk about the evolution of the system. So this is the current architecture. I assume we did not start with this exact architecture. Walk us through the evolution of this architecture. Sure. So first of all, we believe that evolution is a crucial step in building uh, large-scale uh, um, systems. Uh, we actually started with Spark, Streaming, EMR, and Kafka. None of them on the board. Yeah. <laughs> At the next phase, um, we switched to uh, Lambda, Lambda functions in order to gain serverless, hi um, highly available architecture. Okay. At the next phase, we moved most of the Lambda into EKS workers because when a certain, certain scale was reached, 
EC2 compute on spots was much more cost effective. That's a great point. So when you have a large scale, this is something you should exactly. consider. I, I see a lot of different technologies in your process uh, layer. You have uh, Lambda functions, you have EKS, Kubernetes in general. Why is that? So first, uh, we believe the different solution requires different ar architecture and services, and we're not afraid to combine those into a single platform. Um, our algorithm execution flow requires parallelism and flow management. Okay. Step function is a service which provides exactly that for us. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Uh, last question regarding the evolution. Let's talk uh, for a second about the, the store layer. So you're using a lot of different services, S3, Elasticsearch, CockroachDB, which I never heard about, I never used it before. Why do you need so many? So as, as in before, evolution. So uh, we actually started with RDS on, on RDS Postgres on top of AWS. Then, you know, then uh, due to scale and performance requirements, we switched to AuroraDB. At the next phase, we chose Elasticsearch because we searched for a database providing document-based database, okay. which allows self-indexing, and it is a database which is cost-effective. Okay, CockroachDB. So recently, we have found out that Elasticsearch is not the best solution for, for conducting frequent updates, and we moved some of our components to use CockroachDB. CockroachDB is a relational da database which, which can support frequent updates to tables. We deployed CockroachDB in an EKS cluster, which, which allows us to enjoy uh, scalability, availability. Okay, and obviously a lot of components, a lot of moving parts, uh, trying to keep the same architecture using EKS in a lot of places. Uh, I see this as a live system, this is a very evolving system. I wonder what are the future plans for Dynamic RAM? So we have a long list of future plans. Let's try to talk about two of them. Um, first one is related to image processing. So today, most of the image processing and visual ins inspection actually happens in the car. Yeah. We would like to enable cloud Im image processing. To do that, we're going to enable our pre-developed image processing engine. This engine allows us to, image, to process images in stream and gain results. We, we are going to deploy this uh, engine on top of EKS, but this time with GPU instances. Yeah, adding another technology, great. Yeah. Another uh, item in our to-do list is, re is related to cost reduction. So the dynamic RAM platform is going to grow and data, data flow will keep growing. In order, uh, in order to do that, we must make sure that we maintain a solid and reasonable price level per input request from vehicles. Absolutely, and there are so many, so this is absolutely crucial. Ido, thank you very much for sharing. Thank you, Buzz. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.